open your Bibles to John, the Gospel of John 16. Before I go there, I want to read you a little bit of history. Not the kind of history you'll find in school textbooks. But nevertheless, it's still a part of man's history. A history that you ne really never hear about because it's, it's not earth shattering. But it's kind of unique. Have you heard, ever heard of Pelorus Jack? After I'm done reading the history on Pelorus Jack, you can find plenty of information on it, probably on the internet. But Pelorus Jack was a real important part of history if you travel the seas in a certain location. Once upon a time. Throughout history, sailors, sailors have told many remarkable stories of dolphins helping humans. One, one outstanding example is a dolphin that sailors called Polaris Jack. You probably thought I was talking about a human being. No, Polaris Jack was a dolphin. Polaris Jack was a fish. For 24 years, from 1888 to 1912, this selfless animal volunteered to guide ships to the French Pass, a dangerous channel in a bay off New Zealand. 24 years. This treacherous channel, full of rocks and extremely strong currents, had been the site of hundreds of shipwrecks before the intervention of this dedicated dolphin. Hundreds of shipwrecks before this dolphin made itself available to guide these ships through this treacherous channel full of extremely dangerous strong currents and full of rocks everywhere. Polaris was very unique. He was a Rizzo's dolphin, R-I-S-S-O, a species not commonly seen in New Zealand. Nothing is common in this story. Actually, this historical story. Much has been written about Polaris Jack. A species not commonly seen in New Zealand, New Zealand waters or anywhere near land. Yet his work was so reliable that ships reaching the entrance would wait for him to appear and guide them safely through the channel. They would arrive at a certain entrance point and wait for this fish to show up. So he, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm assuming the fish was a he, could have been a she fish, she dolphin, could guide them safely through the channel. He stayed with, with the ship up to 20 minutes. The time it took to cross the bay. 
playfully swimming alongside us and surfing in the bow waves. The bow waves, excuse me. There is no telling how many human lives Polaris saved. Even well-known figures like Mark Twain saw and wrote of Polaris Jack. Then one day, a drunken passenger on board the SS Penguin drew a gun and shot at Polaris. When the furious crew saw the dolphin swimming away with blood pouring from his body, they came close to killing the witless man. After the shooting, Polaris disappeared and ships had to negotiate through the deadly channel without help. But fortunately, a few weeks later, the dolphin returned apparently recovered from his wound and resumed his work of guiding ships through the channel. Every ship, and this is the strange thing about this story also, every ship except the penguin, the SS Penguin, he would help and he would guide. But the SS Penguin he stayed cleared of and by the way, the SS Penguin eventually would wreck several years later. Now, when Polaris Jack returned after being gone for a few weeks, people demanded that he be protected by law. So on September 26, 1904, a government order declared that the helpful, helpful dolphin, a protected animal, until he vanished eight years later. It is believed this is the first sea creature in history protected by a country. And by the way, I'm not going to get into all the details. By the time of his disappearance was a time when more sophisticated navigational instruments were introduced which provided the safety that was needed, the guidance that was needed to travel these dangerous areas, this part of the bay in New Zealand. That's the story of Polaris Jack. It is an historical account Many people have written about Polaris Jack. And you're probably asking, well, that's a cute story. But why even bring it up? Because let me share with you a more superior guide that's available to us. And that is Jesus. When you read the Old Testament and the New Testament, but especially in the Old Testament, you can see that the Lord has always guided His chosen. You go back to Moses' day, when Israel was released from the bondage that they were in, and the Egyptians let them go, the Lord was there guiding the Israelites. He was there with His guidance system. A cloud by day and a pillar by night. And you could find stories throughout the scriptures that verifies over and over God being with his people. No matter what treacherous waters they may face, 
no matter what fires they might find themselves in. He has always sent us a guide. And he's always sent us a guide from keeping us from wrecking on those treacherous spiritual rocks and god-awful spiritual currents. And when I say spiritual, I mean from the unseen, spic uh, unseen evil wicked that want us to be shipwrecked and lost forever. We know in the scriptures, in the New Testament, he sent a comforter, his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit, to simplify it, is just the extension of Jesus. But in a spirit form, instead of the physical Jesus that the apostles saw before he ascended into the clouds. That's what we have available to us. The Holy Spirit. The scriptures call it the Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit comes to guide us, to be in us, to live with us, and to direct, and to direct us in all truth if you seek it. And that's where John 16, open your Bibles there now, and let's go to verse 13. John 16, verse 13 reads, How be it, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide. Now, Pelorus Jack was an amazing animal, or fish, or mammal. I'm sure many thank God for providing that dolphin, which, no doubt about it, saved lives. But like I said, I like to focus in on a more superior guide. And that is the spirit of truth. And it's promised there that he will guide you into all truth. I believe everyone that's found this ministry, a small portion of you knew me from the past, and where I came from, many more have found me through all the ways we advertise where you can find this ministry. I believe every single one of you are seekers of the truth. You're truth seekers. You have a passion to know more about God and His ways. You have a passion to Know what God's Word really says and means. What is instructing us through these pages. That's why I think you're a unique bunch that follows this ministry. You haven't accepted the norm that's out there in the Christian world for various reasons. because you were seeking the truth. You were truth seekers. And I believe one of those reasons why you're seeking the truth so, more, so much is because how be it when He, the Spirit of Truth, has come, He will guide. He guide you here. Whether you like it or not, there's no doubt about it. And He guides you as you study the Scriptures. You can't run from it. Howbeit, when He, the Spirit of Truth, has come, He will guide. The Greek there, if you put it in our everyday language, it would read, He will show you 
the way, right, right in your margin there. Circle the word guide and right in the margin. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will show you the way. Into what? Into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself or speak from himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. There in context, the way it should have been translated, he will announce. Because he will guide you in all truth. He will announce what is to come from a certain time to another time. Most of you here, I would say a good portion of you here because... of the last day series, the prophecy series that I've spent years now preaching through that has opened your eyes and is taking you in a different direction than the Christian science fiction nonsense that's preached out there. That's becoming so popular. I've been reading so many different things and different authors and different articles and different writers about the rapture trying to defend their positions, and they do a poor job. They, try, they think if they throw enough scriptures at it that it will bamboozle you, I guess, into believing what they're saying is true. They take everything out of context. They really have no supportive material. And the next time we're on the rapture, I'll be on the resurrections, God willing. Maybe next time we're alive. And speaking of resurrections, Probably the number one question the last few months since I started the Rapture series is, well, what, uh, I just don't understand with soul sleep and who's raising who and whatever. I already shared one message to you, a brief message on soul sleep. And I am so sick and tired of preach, people preaching that if we pass away, we go into some unconscious state because our soul dies, our physical body dies, and our spirit ascends into the heavens to be stored up somewhere until Christ returns. To give everyone, those who are dead and those who are living, a new body. Let me forewarn you. Most of these soul sleepers and their idiotic teachings, and like I said, they throw enough scriptures at you to bamboozle you into believing their lies. If you haven't noticed, if any of you out there, I'm not sure anybody, well, I know there's people out there that get the questions, but thing is, they bamboozle you with all the scriptures they throw to try to prove their formula for whatever they believe in concerning that once you go to close your eyes, that's it, until God wakes you up again. The problem with their teachings is they always focus predominantly, I would say 98 to 99% scriptures found in the Old Testament. And that's the problem. That should raise the red flag in your mind to say there's something wrong with this. Because it all changes when Jesus came out of that tomb. That's why in the New Testament, they try to twist the scripture, especially what Paul said, to be absent of the body, be present of the Lord. And they try to change the scriptures, and they take it out of context to prove their Old Testament scriptures. I'm sorry, my friend, they are dead wrong. 
after that resurrection. I probably have to in the future expound on this a little bit more. I'm not going to do it at this time, but they are dead wrong. Don't be gullible. And that all of these con artists that have no business preaching on that particular subject, at least, if that's what they're preaching, convince you differently. Christ's resurrection was a game changer. What about all the saints that are coming back with them? Are they just in a Holy Spirit form? Remember, the bodies consist of, while it's alive here now, if you're a Christian, body, soul, spirit. If you're a Christian, there's a fourth element, the Holy Spirit in you. If you're not a Christian, you got body, soul, and spirit only. That connection, that Holy Spirit connection was severed because what Adam did. And only through Christ, by putting your faith and trust in Christ and what He's done for you to make you right with God, you now have the opportunity to have the Holy Spirit in you because what Christ did. So there's four elements in you. What's only coming back with, the, with Jesus? What's following Jesus on that white horse? Spirit globs? I don't want to get it. That's a sidebar. I don't want to get into it. But I don't even know how I got off on that. But He will guide you into the truth. That's why you're here. For he shall not speak from himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He will announce to you through the Holy Spirit as he guides you through the word. And faith come by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And how can they hear unless a preacher sent? God still in his chain of command has chosen the preacher to bring and present to you the things that Reveal him in his word. Puts it front and center. If you're a truth seeker, and then not a memorizer of systems, formulas, and false doctrines, mostly created in the last 200 some years. Especially when it comes to prophecy. You're not here by accident. If a fish can guide sailors, how much more can we compare it? How much more can my Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, guide you and guide me? Some of you are still searching out there for churches. I don't put fault to that. People like to have conversations and fellowship with other Christians. But one of the problems that comes with that, you got to accept their baggage or you're the outcast. Well, I'm here to tell you, don't feel like an outcast. Because if you're a truth seeker, the spirit of truth is come. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are there to guide you into all truth. To announce in your being what you need to know from a certain time to another. The things that He wants you to know. That is beneficial and edifying to not you only, but to the body of Christ as you participate. Now, I thought you would like a little bit of that fun history along with a far superior guide, which is Jesus himself. Now, I want to hear from you. Play a song.